How's it going guys? VD Engineering here. Welcome to my video on designing a rocket nozzle and calculating structural loads from a CFD simulation as well as harmonic analysis. This will be very useful if you're designing a rocket for a competition and if you want to design it to withstand specific loads from your flight conditions. Your design problem can be seen here. We have a nozzle of Mach number 2.5 at the exit and we can determine your dimensions from the asyntropic flow calculations. The workflow will be first doing a CFD and then the, importing the loads from CFD as temperature into your FEA. For a geometry, make sure in your FEA analysis, you will actually have two separate geometries in there. The one geometry will be your wall thickness, so make sure you have that. And I made this in SOLIDWORKS, for example, but you can use any CAT software. For pressure loading, you will first divide your nozzle up by using the ANSYS feature, it's called slicing, and then importing pressure for one face using asyntropic flow calculations. Your harmonic loading, I have it taken from the SpaceX Falcon 9 user's manual. You can find this online, it's open source, and you can actually drag the values into your ANSYS simulation and perform like a real life scenario of your harmonic loading. So let's jump right into CFD. The first thing you do is import your geometry there. So right click and select import geometry. I'll be importing my CFD geometry, which is my inner surface. And when I import it, I can see my geometry there. It's essentially just a wall. So let's first now drag it into a mesh. So drag your geometry into there and let's mesh your geometry. So I have generate mesh as shown and we can refine it. So let's add face meshing onto your surfaces. It has to be on all surfaces. So let's hit apply, control A and then hit apply. Let's add a method. We'll be using multi-zone since it makes it structured and it makes your mesh quite, quite accurate. So that's quite useful. We can also add sizing as shown. I have my sizing set to two millimeters around there for my case. But for your, your nozzle, it'll be a bit different. So make sure you, you choose something which works best for your application. It has to be small enough so your nozzle ends up having a structured mesh. But you won't need refinement because our analysis will be inviscid, which means that we'll be ignoring the viscosity of the fluid. So with that done, you can then hit generate mesh and you can see what your final mesh looks like. So it's a lot better now and we can then create our named selection. So for your wall, I, I just called it CD section and may make two more name selections for your inlet and your outlet because that's how we'll be applying our boundary conditions, pressure, temperature, and your mark. So let's hit transfer data to new fluent and let's select double precision and I'll be using parallel since I have a dual core CPU. So hit OK. Set it to density based. Set your models to energy should be on because our temperature will be changing downstream. And viscosity, make it inviscid since we will be ignoring shear stresses for now. For your fluids, set your air to ideal gas and hit change create. For your boundary conditions, select inlet and up apply your pressure loading there. I have it set to 160 kPa and about 350 Kelvin. So we can add that very quickly here. And thermal will be 350 Kelvin as described in a design problem. For your outlet, set a pressure which is very close to vacuum since that'll be our design case. So let's hit about 10 Pascals. You don't want zero because then it'll not be able to solve it. So your reference values, make sure you select inlet because that's where you're starting from. Since your velocity is a bit off, change your operating conditions to zero pascals because we are using gauge values here and not absolute. So let's go set our reference values again and you have about 37 meters per second there which makes a lot more sense. Set your monitors to 10 to the power of the negative five but this can be up to you. It's depending on what your situation is. Let's initialize it standard and select inlet to initialize your CFD. And let's now run the calculation. So hit check case and hit calculate. So I have about 1000 iterations for mine and you'll see it calculate very quickly. Your residuals are going down very fast and it does tend to converge quickly. So when you're done that, 
go inside your structural and let's add some materials. I have aluminum for my case, but it can be up to you. Depending on what your nozzle is made out of, you can select your corresponding material in there. And now let's import your geometry. So let's import our FEA geometry in this case. So right click on geometry and then select import geometry and I have my combo there. It's the one with my two parts, my inner and my outer as well. And you can see it over there. So what you will have to do is you will have to suppress your, your inner part. So hit suppress body. For pressure loading, let's now break your nozzle up into planes. I have a one example shown over here. Go and create new plane. Go and call it plane one because that's my first plane which I just create. And select YZ plane. And let's offset the value in Z because my nozzle is like this and I want to offset it as I go along. So I'll be doing that multiple times. I have my division set to 0 0.02 meters because my length was 100 centimeters and I have it divided by five. So I have 20 millimeters in there. Sorry, I meant to say my length is 100 millimeters. So I have it 20 millimeters per slot. So keep on doing this for all the other sections. It has to be by a fixed distance because we'll be adding our pressure loads by section one, section two, and so on. So make sure you do, do it that way. So with that being done, we can also do it upstream. So before the nozzle, midsection we can add another slot there because we'll be using varying pressures along my nozzle this is very important because um you you have to make sure that your nozzle pressures are set to isentropic flow conditions so make sure you do that so this is actually how they do it at companies like spacex but they use a lot more accurate algorithms this is just uh, an example So here I have it to be negative because I want to split the behind section of it. So I have that. Now let's create a slice. So go and create slice. And for your base plane, just select each plane as you go along one at a time. Since we'll be slicing over there and hit generate. So you can see my slice being done. Now keep on doing this for everything else. And what you're essentially doing here is that you're breaking your nozzle up into many sections. So it is very important to do this as I said before. Eventually you will have something like that. You can see my sections broken up there. So now let's move on to the fun stuff. Let's do our thermostructural analysis. So the first thing you want to do is drag your CFD solution from fluent into structural. So drag solution to setup. Go and import a load and select body temperature because we'll be importing our temperature and not our pressure. The reason why I don't import my pressure is because in fluent the sign tends to change. So my pressure values are actually pushing out the nozzle this way. But for some reason in Fluent, it's, it pushes it that way. So I'll be using discrete pressure values in there. Go on pressure loading and now let's apply our pressure loads. Let's first go into diverging section. So the, the converging section, sorry. So select your first face and the value can be seen there. I have it 144.8 kilopascals. And these values are obtained from isentropic flow calculations. You can use an online calculator for this. Or you can also do it by hand, it's quite simple. Simply take your area ratio and then find your pressure over there. So the pressure value will keep going down because the flow is continually accelerating as you go downstream. So you can see my diverging values in there. It ranges from 36 kPa to about 9 kPa, so keep on doing that. The values are important in Pascal, so make sure you multiply it by 1000. So do this for every face and you will have varying pressure along you go as you go along the nozzle. And once you have that, you can then import your loads. So the pressure is almost done. And let's add my last pressure at the outlet. It should be close to a vacuum, so it should be about 9 kPa as shown. Your mesh can be seen there, but let's improve it. So let's add a sizing in there. How about two millimeters? And select all bodies, so hit Control A and select it. So then set your element sizing there. I had about 2.5 millimeters for my case. And hit Generate, so you can then look at what your mesh looks like. And let's re-import our temperature loading to make our mesh values match. So that's done. 
and let's add a fixed support. Usually in rockets, they constrain the nozzle at the top. That's where it's bolted into the, the engine assembly to all the hydraulics and the pumping so we can constrain that and let's run it. So our results can be seen over here, your stress values as well as your displacement values. So let's jump into harmonic now and let's jump into that. So go on solution, right click, transfer data to new harmonic response. This is very simple, go into setup and add an acceleration loading from SpaceX's manual. You can then select tabular data, 100 Hertz, and also use your components there and your vector should be, I'll be using components because I'll be importing my acceleration as a table. So select tabular and then go into your values there and then hit your data points. So just copy the values as shown in my case. If you're designing for something else, you can import your values in there but this will be the way how you do it. So when you hit run, you can then see your solution there, go on frequency response. This tells you your frequency curve. So it shows you st stress with frequency and it also shows you your deformation with, with frequency. So, so that is it for my video guys. Thank you for watching. I showed you guys how you can actually combine fluid dynamics, structural mechanics, and harmonic loading into one simulation in ANSYS. ANSYS does allow very robust capabilities, so you can quickly do this. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them below. See you guys next time. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.